What up everyone, it's Kirtan Sin and I'm back with a brand new video. So the fifth episode of The Mandalorian is now out, so let's talk about it. This episode of The Mandalorian was once again a mixed bag. Like the previous episode, this episode had some pretty good moments, but some also not so good moments to say the least. While the episodes are still quite short, unlike episode 3 where you didn't feel that time length just being pushed through, in this episode it just went by like that as if nothing much happened. Now a lot of people I've read reviews of um, online they've said oh even though there's not a lot of action people are complaining and whatnot but there's character development. But there isn't really any character development. The Mandalorian doesn't really have any character development. We already know he's skilled, we already know he's powerful. So then when we see him best the assassin and also that rookie gunslinger, it doesn't really have that much of an impact. Even between the child and the Mandalorian, there's no development. There's Unlike episode 2, which actually had them venturing out together, and you kind of really, even that episode felt like not much happened, but at least that development happened between those two characters. But in this episode, they're separated for the whole episode, which is also so stupid of the Mandalorian to do. Because in the, at the end of the last episode, you were reminded of the fact that maybe the child is being tracked, so then why would you leave him in your ship unprotected when he can be tracked? It just doesn't make sense. Yes, it's established later on that the guild doesn't really work off Tatooine anymore, but that doesn't mean members of the guild can't still be on Tatooine, like the gunslinger who is wanting to get into the guild. So the Mandalorian, although he's so smart in this episode, which we already knew about, He's also so stupid. Speaking of the gunslinger, he is an alright character. I'm really surprised by the fact that he didn't let the assassin go and then end up dying by that. So that was a good twist, but at the same time the acting was a little hit and miss. With the assassin as well, I felt like they weren't really much of, you know, an opponent for the two, um, I was going to say Mandalorians, but the two um, members of the guild. They were fairly able, capable of actually defeating her, and I do like the reference to the high ground, but I was hoping for more of a confrontation considering how well of an assassin she's brought up to be. But moving on from the characters, the other aspects that I did like was most of the fan service in this episode. Seeing Tatooine again is good, it makes sense. Um, seeing the Stormtrooper heads we saw from the trailer is just such a cool shot and I really love it. The pit droids, the bar, the fact there's droids in the bar, and most importantly for me, the Tusken Raiders. Now it is a little, wait, what? why did that happen when the Tusken Raiders just appear out of nowhere behind the Gunslinger? But the thing is, I really love how the Tusken Raiders are explained to be more um, intelligent than some people may believe because I just finished reading, or actually didn't just finish, I read it a few months ago, the novelization of The Phantom Menace and in that book itself there's actually talk about, what was it, actually a chapter which is dedicated to Kid Anakin and he takes care of a Tusken Raider who's injured and that Tusken Raider does end up killing him um, and he's sp Anakin spared and all these other Tusken Raiders just let him be and it's really cool to see how they have some sort of intelligence. And Dave Filoni, the guy who wrote and directed this episode, carries on that idea by actually having them able to communicate with the Mandalorian, and also the idea that the, they see this land as their own and everyone else is trespassing. I enjoyed some aspects of it, I didn't enjoy others, and I was hoping for a little bit more. The main thing that's really holding back this show is the fact that I know it's 8 episodes long. And with the first 3 episodes being so story driven, and then episode 4 and 5 feeling more like offbeat stories, which isn't a bad idea, but since I know that there are only so few episodes to go, it just feels like I need more of the story to play in with these side stories. More of the whole child quest and more of the other bounty hunters coming in. So I was finding out how these bounty hunters are tracking Yoda, how they're even tracking the assassin, how does all of this work? So that way we can learn a little bit more about the Empire as well, who some people believe is the one who found the assassin's body, and the child as well, so we can know more about them and the main story and how it ties in with the Mandalorian, his past, and everything about the main character. 
But nonetheless, I did enjoy this episode. Let me know in the comment section down below what you thought about this episode. Did you enjoy it? Did you not? Is it your favorite episode so far? And what was your favorite part? Make sure you hit that like button, subscribe to my channel, and until next time, I'll see you guys.